Romans 12, 1. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Thank you for joining me once more for the series on God words, theological terms that help us understand the fellowship into which God has invited us. The word we're looking at today is translated urge. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul wrote, I urge you therefore. As we begin chapter 12 of Romans, we're shifting focus this is the last section of the letter in which we have the practical application of justification and sanctification. How ought we carry out the things of life as we live out our life? What does that look like in a practical way? And it begins with this word urge. If we go back to the language in which Paul wrote the letter, Greek, we find here a compound word. The word means close, beside, and to call. So it, he is making a call as he is, we could say standing, close beside us, if not physically, certainly in spirit. Close, a close beside call. And as we look at the meaning of the word that Paul actually used there, we find first three synonyms, three ideas that are present that at first glance don't even look like they relate to each other. But as we walk through them, I, I hope we'll see a relationship between these three terms. First of all, it is an exhorting. We could translate, I exhort you. And that's a pretty strong word. It's a word that calls us quite powerfully to action. If we are exhorted to do something, there is an urgency behind it. There is a, a power in the command, we might say, behind it, to be exhorted. But it is also a word of comfort. We could say that I comfortingly urge you, comfortingly exhort you, the idea here being that what we are being called to do is not being placed on us as a burden, but as a joy. That we can find comfort, that we can find that doing what God has called us to do is not burdensome, but easy. That as we are urged, Paul is also comforting us, walking along beside us, and, and, and then the last word encouraging goes with that, but he's walking along beside us, encouraging us with a comfort to do that which is natural to the reborn self. In another conversation, we're going to look at the word that is here translated mercies of God. But we recognize that it's because of what God has done for us. And we this whole conversation has been about God inviting us into fellowship with himself, a recognition of our sinfulness, a recognition that by a gift of his mercy, he forgives our sins and declares us not guilty, he declares us righteous, and then he works in us to change us, to sanctify us, that he puts to death the sinful nature in us and raises to life a new nature, which is then encouraged to do the things that the new nature does. And that's what is happening here as Paul turns to the practical application of the gospel in our lives. He is urging us. He is exhorting us. He is comforting us. He is encouraging us in this doing. 
doing that which comes naturally to the reborn nature. It is not natural to the sinful nature, but it is a character trait of the new nature to do these things. Secondly, we see the word that Paul used here is the root of the term that Jesus used in John chapter 14 as he was referring to the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, we translate the word parakletos, translated into English, paraclete, to helper or counselor. And we understand in this word of the one who walks beside us and calls us as he walks beside us, that there is legal counsel here. And that it is tied directly to the Holy Spirit. And we don't get that sense as we read the word as it's translated in English. When we hear, I urge you, we're really not sensing, but I think it's ab absolutely in the term there, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so it is that we can say that it is the Holy Spirit who is inspiring Paul to write these words, and that it is actually the Holy Spirit himself who is speaking to us as men were carried along by the Holy Spirit to write the Holy Scriptures. And so when we hear the word urge, we ought to be thinking of the work of the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, who is our counselor, but we see those in legal terms. And so there are strong legal overtones here that the Holy Spirit is not simply helping us with our life. He's, simply, he's not simply speaking, you know, good things to us as, as, as one might use the word counselor. But this is a legal sense. That he is standing next to us in the court of law. Pleading on our behalf. That he is giving us the advice that we need. That he is our legal counsel. And that what he is calling us to do is not a burden, but that which is a part of living out our lives in the transformation that Jesus has made in us, as he has invited us into fellowship with himself. I urge you, therefore. Thank you for being a part of the conversation. God bless you.